Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Virtual Travel Escapes. I'm Rhonda Svian, the Leisure Manager at Paul Travel, and co-hosting with me today is Julie Beckdash. Hello, Julie. Hi, everyone. We appreciate everybody taking the time out of your busy day today um, to take some time and escape. Um, hopefully, you're going to enjoy exploring some of, some of the world's great destinations and experiences. Or perhaps you might gain a new understanding and appreciation for the country's cultures, diversity, and beauty. I know that many of us have been dreaming about where we'd like to go to next. Uh, you may think um, you might want to travel. Well, personally, what I think maybe travel is going to be growing into um, a, a direction of small groups, maybe solo travel coming up, um, and explore, explorations incorporating uh, sustainability and volunteerism. So today's presentation will give you a really great taste of all the options out there. So I hope you all will enjoy. Uh, before I turn this over to Julie uh, to introduce our special guest today, I just wanted to remind everybody out there, um, if you've missed any of our past webinars, uh, you will find them on our Paul Travel website, um, www.paultravel.com slash webinars. There'll be a list of all of our previous um, webinars that we have hosted. Um, also for next week, um, we are going to do something a little bit different. Um, you know, this webinar series has been fantastic and we've been showcasing a lot of countries and experiences, um, but we're bringing you a young Swiss family who have spent the last, tra uh, last 10 years uh, traveling the world. Uh, they've cycled over seven, uh, 78,000 kilometers and visited over 20 countries. Um, they've done this all while raising a small, a small young family, like the, their daughters are really quite young. So it's going to be really interesting on their take and their perspective of travel with the family and the different cultures and experiences that they've in, in, uh, endured and experienced along the way. So I think it'll be really great. So that'll be next Thursday at 7 p.m., so a little bit later time. So I hope you can join us. So for today, um, any questions that you may have, um, please enter them in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Um, you've all been muted, um, so any questions, put them in there. Maybe any comments that you might have, um, just put them in the chat or in the Q&A box. And Julie's going to you know, monitor them, and at the end of the presentation, um, she will ensure that all your questions get answered. So Julie, I'm going to turn it over to you, and you're going to welcome our, our wonderful guest today. Perfect. Thank you, Rhonda. Um, so today we have with us Erin Rogers, and she is with, as you know, uh, G Adventure. She is our rep, um, Western Canadian rep for G Adventures, and she just celebrated 15 years with the company and has many tales of adventures um, to share. Over the past decade, Erin has traveled to all seven continents, so ranging from places from Antarctica to Zimbabwe. Um, some of her favorite places in the world are Buenos Aires, Argentina, Cape Town, South Africa um, and where she resides now which is in Vancouver Canada. Um, some of her highlights of her her travels around the world are um, skydiving in New Zealand, rafting at the source of the Nile in Uganda, um, visiting the Everest base camp in Tibet and snorkeling in the Galapagos Islands. Um, one of her very favorite countries, though, is Iceland, where she was uh, able to trek on a glacier there. So, Erin, it's such a joy for you to be with us. We're so happy to have you and just to hear about more about your stories and just for you to take us on a little adventure around the world. So I'll pass it over to you to share your screen. And um, yeah, so looking forward to having you. Thank you. That's great. Welcome. Thanks so much. Wow, you sound pretty adventurous from all those things. You do, you are. <laughs> You've been a lot of places. It makes me really miss travel, so can't wait to get back out there. All right, I'm going to share my screen and we will get started. So thanks everyone for tuning in. I'm really happy to be here with Paul Travel to tell you all about G Adventures. We have uh, lots of continents to, to cover, of course, today and lots of different uh, destinations to visit. 
So hopefully some of you that are joining have heard about G-Adventures before or have had the chance to experience travel with us. If not, not to worry, relax, sit back in your couch or your chair and enjoy this kind of a quick round the world tour. Hopefully I'll be able to give you some ideas on where you might want to explore next and give you an understanding of what we're up to at G-Adventures. So we are a Canadian small group tour operator. We've been around since 1990. We really specialize in getting off the beaten path. We like to get up close and personal in destination where we're traveling. So we're doing that in the safety and security of a small group using a local guide, which we call a chief experience officer. So they're in fact the CEO of your journey. Uh, we want to keep it really local when we're traveling and we make sure to visit lots of beautiful community initiatives in destination. Our guides are always local, we're staying in locally owned properties and traveling using some local transportation, making sure that the money is staying in the destination that you've chosen to visit. Now also with our travel styles, we like to get you a little bit lost, uh, but not too lost of course, because that would be a problem for us as a global tour operator. So we want to travel uh, safely. We want to travel like a traveler, not like a tourist. We want to put you in front of the most beautiful sites that you have the chance to visit. Some of those big bucket list items, some of those big highlights, those hot travel destinations. But we also want to show you stuff that you didn't necessarily think that you get to see on trip. Now our local guides, I can't say enough amazing things about. Uh, in this photo, you'll see Ayman. He's wearing the Love, Lead, Embrace, Create, Do t-shirt. He's one of our guides from Jordan. He's been with us for over 10 years and he is the local expert. When you're traveling on this style of tour, you're gonna to be with a group size of around 10 or 12 people. So it's really small group experience. Those travelers are coming from all over the world. Uh, one thing they have in common, of course, is that they've chosen that exact destination and that tour itinerary to travel on. Our guide is there to organize anything extra, uh, any extra activities, any extra tours that you'd like to do. They're also there to be your built-in best friend, your language translator, your person that's going to tell you where the clean washrooms are, uh, which roads to go on, which ones to stay off of. And they're there to explore the culture of the destination with you. So you can ask them a gazillion questions. And if they don't know the answer right away, they're going to find that out for you. Um, I've been really fortunate to have traveled on quite a few of our tour itineraries and our guides and destination do just a phenomenal job. They're honestly like the most amazing ambassador for their country and also for G Adventures for when you're traveling with us. Now, one thing I do want to mention in this uh, program today is that we don't charge any single supplements on our tours. Uh, so if you're a solo traveler, no need to worry about that. We do a guaranteed share program in destination where we'd match you up with another traveler to share uh, to share space. Or if you want to have your own room, you can do that with us and it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg. And that's really important, I think, as solo travel continues to rise as a growing trend in the travel industry, we want to best accommodate all those solo travelers. And I've had the chance to go on a ton of our trips on my own as a solo female traveler and I've seen places that I wouldn't necessarily feel comfortable traveling to on my own. Um, so it's amazing to be surrounded by that safety and security of the group but then also have the assistance of the local guides in destination. Now, when you're looking to plan a trip, right now is a little bit of a weird time. So I want to explain to you how it works with G Adventures. We have a lifetime deposit program by which uh, any deposit that you make to G Adventures through Travel Agent on your tour is good forever. So things can come up, as we all know, over the course of this past year, we've seen the greatest example of that. Um, the deposit that you've made with us is good forever. You can transfer it to a friend, to a family member. You could even donate it to our nonprofit organization if you feel that you're not going to travel again. Uh, the deposit is just a small amount of the tour value. So it's just $350 to deposit onto one of our tours. And the balance isn't due until 60 days prior. We have increased our booking terms and condition flexibility, which I'll tell you a little bit about at the end. But first, I want to talk about some of these amazing destinations that we get to go to on these tours. Now, 
Community tourism is something really important to us at G Adventures. If you haven't had the chance to, to travel with us just yet, you might not have had this kind of experience, but it is one that's really special and has been a, a big value to G Adventures since Bruce, the founder, began the business back in 1990. Um, it is a Canadian company. I don't know if I mentioned that. It's really important, of course, to support our Canadian travel industry right now in this crazy time. So just wanted to kind of mention that as well. So community tourism is really the essence of everything that we do and stand for at G Adventures. When we're looking to put together these itineraries, we always ask ourselves the question, is this really going to be good for the local community? Uh, every supplier that we work with, every accommodation provider, every transfer driver, every restaurant that we're visiting, we want to ensure that those funds are going into those local communities so that we're having a positive impact on the communities rather than a negative one. We stay away from over touristed areas and we're trying to kind of divert tourism in a way such that the neighboring communities are able to benefit from the tourism dollars. Um, the image that you see on your screen is actually an experience that we include in our northern Thailand trip. So if you are interested in going into northern Thailand, we do a hiking trip to see the hill tribes. Instead of going in on a quick whirlwind day trip to have this experience, we want our travelers to be immersed in the culture. So we're going into these local villages, we're meeting the local people, we're sharing a meal with them. In some cases, we're even doing a homestay program where we'd be staying in a property um, on site, on the same site of the home that they're living in. So really interesting way to travel and really eye-opening, I think, uh, if, you're, if you're looking to go and explore somewhere new. We're able to do all these really amazing community initiatives through Planetara, which is the nonprofit arm of our business at G Adventures. So it was established back in 2003. It's a not-for-profit partner um, to help communities benefit from tourism. So through Planetara, we're working to identify local businesses around the world and make sure that we're providing them with foundations for long-term success. I'm gonna give you some examples of these programs because uh, off the top, it sounds like a little confusing in terms of what we do, but we'll give you some real live examples of the positive impact that you can have in destination just by choosing to do a tour with a company such as G Adventures. So through Planetara, we support over 80 projects on all seven continents. Our big focuses for now are benefiting women, at-risk youth, and rural and Indigenous communities. We also have some programs that are supporting the environment, uh, and we have a new plastics project where we're aiming to eradicate the use of plastics on our tours. So big ideas. Uh, we have an amazing team behind the scenes that are helping to initiate this. And we have a global network of offices all around the world to help support this in destination through the tours that we do. Now onto that, uh, on travel with G Adventures, we have quite a few different ways to travel. So I wanna run through them really quickly. Some of these are included in our presentation today. Uh, some I didn't have time to <laughs> in the short time that I'm presenting for the audience. So just to give you an overview of what we do at G Adventures and feel free to talk to Paul Travel for more information on this. Um, the classic way of travel with G Adventures is small group, so usually on average about 12 people. Uh, local transportation, local accommodation, lots of tour activities included, but also lots of free time to pick and choose what you want to do in destination. We like that freedom and flexibility in all of our tours, and we're easily able to include that with the aid of our local guides and the smaller, smaller group size. So if not everyone wants to go and see one thing, then our guides are able to organize multiple options for everyone throughout the day. We do active and wellness programs. So if you're interested in doing something active now that we've all been cooped up for months, uh, we have some really amazing active tours. So think Everest Base Camp, think uh, Kilimanjaro trekking in Africa, think uh, trekking Mont Blanc, which is on my bucket list, mostly for the combination of active hiking, beautiful landscapes and incredible cuisine <laughs> through France and Italy. Um, we also do hike, bike and raft style itineraries and we have a wellness program. So if you're more into doing kind of yoga and mindful meditation, then that's something that we can offer too. We have local living tours over in Europe where you're staying in a centrally located kind of boutique property and going out on daily excursions. We have marine programs. So if you're interested in going on sailing through the Greek islands or heading out to the Galapagos by small ship yacht, then that's 
also something that we do. Um, we do National Geographic programs. So we launched our partnership with National Geographic uh, just over five years ago. In the National Geographic line of tours, you'll find a collection of over 80 itineraries. These are a little bit more focused on educational content, historical content. Our accommodations are a little bit more comfortable than what you'd think for an adventure tour. And we have the added infusion of local experts from place to place in destination. And the spinoff from National Geographic is our family program. So we have National Geographic family journeys too. So those just launched about two years ago and we're getting lots of interest in multi-generations, spending some family time together uh, away in a, in a destination. So the first travel destination I wanted to feature for today is one that's a little closer to home than a lot of the ones that we operate. So as a Canadian company, we really specialize in exporting tourism, so sending people all over the world. We sent 200,000 people on tours in 2019, which is just crazy to even think about. Costa Rica has always been one of our crowd favorites. It's an eco-tourist dream. It is really one of those destinations that measures up to the hype. It's uh, um, a beautiful coastline, there's incredible nature, really amazing wildlife encounters, think like sloths and howler monkeys and hummingbirds the size of small seagulls almost, <laughs> that might be a little bit of an exaggeration, but beautiful area for wildlife and bird watching. And Costa Rica, it's 100% Pura Vida, the locals call it Pure Life and they are the most uh, welcoming. The tour that I wanted to feature uh, today is actually from our G Adventures family collection. So it's our Costa Rica family program. It's nine days. It loops out of San Jose, the capital of Costa Rica. And it's a really great option if you are interested in traveling with kids or grandkids um, or perhaps with another family. This is a really beautiful tour that's designed to not only keep the kids entertained, but also give some really amazing content for, for the grownups in the, in the group. Uh, for our family programs, our minimum age is six. So these tours are designed for people that are traveling with kids or grandkids between like six and 16. If you have uh, family members that are 12 and up, they can join us on any other G Adventures tour. So they're most welcome to join on quite the variety of travel. But for the younger kids, the family tours are really the ones to have a look for. So this is a week long trip, super educational. It gives uh, kids that education on biology, on ecology that can't really ever be found in a textbook. So we're spending the days and the nights learning about the flora and the fauna in destination. So we're visiting places like Manuel Antonio National Park. They also get to spend some time on the coast. They go walking with the naturalist guide to look for monkeys in the canopy of the jungle and it's just a beautiful destination. Here's the map to see where we travel, this nice little um, kite shaped map. So going from San Jose, we are heading up into La Fortuna and Arenal, which is the volcanic area. There's opportunity here to um, get out and do some included kayaking and paddle boarding at Lake Fortuna or La Fortuna on Lake Arenal, pardon me. Um, from there, we go to Monteverde. We have a guided cloud forest night walk included. We also do a tortilla making and local lunch in La Fortuna. In Monteverde, we've got options to do the uh, zip line. We can do canopy swings, the more active experiences. There's also options to do horseback riding or mountain biking if that's what's of interest to the family. If you are interested in traveling to Costa Rica and don't want to pack the kids with you, we do have the same tour called Costa Rica Quest. That's a really great option. We have a lot of the same inclusions and it follows a pretty similar path. After Monteverde, we go down to Manuel Antonio where we have a guided hike in the park. Um, food is a big part of travel everywhere you go. One of the things that we like to do at G Adventures to support the local economy is include locally home cooked meals. Um, Costa Rica is no exception to this. We have built in a tortilla making lesson. So with this, everyone gets to grind the corn, they mix the masa, which is the dough, and they flatten it in circles and then they cook them on a wood burning stove. Afterwards, we get to eat, of course, which is always the great part about the, the cooking classes in any of these destinations. So this, what you see on the screen is a typical casado. So it's a, a traditional dish, including black beans and plantains. This one has some uh, fish with it, some fresh food and those tortillas that we've just made all together. 
In La Fortuna, during our stay, there's a wide variety of activities for people to participate in. So there's river rafting, there's rappelling down waterfalls, there's that horseback riding I mentioned. You can get into the canals of a wildlife refuge here um, to look for caiman, the, the mini alligators of South America. Um, there's lots of wildlife experiences included up in um, Monteverde. Uh, from La Fortuna, we make our way by boat and then van up to Monteverde to get into this beautiful cloud forest. So we have two days exploring the community and the forest in this bird lover's paradise. In Monteverde, there's plenty to see, including the canopy walks. Um, we do always recommend the zip lining if you're looking for a little bit more active. I actually did a, years and years ago, I did a family trip with my parents to Costa Rica. And um, I think my mom had more fun on the zip line than I did actually. Um, but a really fun experience if you're looking for something a little different. And with this trip, we, we rounded out with a visit to Manuel Antonio National Park, which is um, an area where the, the waves are soft, so really great for kids in the ocean. There's options to boogie board here, um, but the big highlight, of course, is that park that's right beside the beach where they get to go in to look for sloths and birds and toucans and uh, red scarlet macaws and, and those howler monkeys that we see seem to hear everywhere before we see them. So we have an included hike here with our guide um, before we enjoy the beautiful white sand beaches. Heading a little further now into Peru, this is our number one destination for G Adventures travelers. It's uh, the heart of the Incan Empire. Uh, Machu Picchu itself is a beautiful world UNESCO heritage site that offers lots of um, travel inspiration and also mystery to it, of course. So it's, uh, it's a beautiful place to visit. You don't have to hike to get to Machu Picchu. <laughs> we actually offer both the option to do the Inca Trail hike or to take the train, so it's completely up to you. The tour that I wanted to feature is part of our National Geographic Journeys collection. So again, with these, there's a little bit more focus on history and culture, a little bit more included, um, some more meals included, uh, a little bit more comfort in the accommodations that we're staying in. On this particular tour, it's 14 days out of Lima, which is the capital. Uh, we catch the, the train or you do the walk to Machu Picchu. Um, we spend some time in the Amazon rainforest at the start. We spend some time in Cusco, which is really the heart of the Incan Empire. Um, we go down to Lake Titicaca, which is the highest elevated lake on Earth, and we get into to learn a little bit at the cult pardon me, a little bit about the culture in that area of the world. So going from these incredible ruins into um, the majestic Amazon jungle and then learning about uh, the culture in Peru. So lots included with this one. If you're looking at these maps now and thinking, wow, that's a lot of flights. There are the Andean mountains in the middle there. So the most uh, convenient and quickest way to travel around in Peru is by plane. These are included in the tour price. So when you're booking the tour with Paul Travel, uh, start to finish all that transportation, all the accommodations are included. Some of your meals are included and we give you options. So if you are working on different price points, then everyone can be accommodated in destination and the guides are there to really answer all those questions. So if there's something you really, really want to try in destination, like the guinea pig, um, you can do that. <laughs> They'll be able to point you into the, the nicest restaurant that has that on the menu and it's called Kui. My recommendation on that would be to share it with your friends and don't order it for yourself. <laughs> Back to this tour. So we start the tour in Lima, which is right coastal Peru, beautiful kind of cliff top city, really rocky, uh, cold water coastline. We fly into the Amazon and our journey really starts there where we take a motorized canoe two and a half hours into the jungle where we're staying at a beautiful G Lodge. So it's in the Tampa Pata Eco Reserve. We spend two nights at the G Lodge where we're going out with our naturalist guide for excursions. From there, we fly to Cusco, which is uh, the, again, the heart of the Incan Empire. Uh, we travel into the Sacred Valley. We are going into, to connect with some locals in this area, we actually go into a potato park in the Sacred Valley, which is one of our Planetara supported initiatives. Um, the potato park helps to support over 200 farmers in the valley and potatoes are a big part of the cuisine in Peru. They actually produce over 3000 different types of potatoes. 
Um, after that, we have the option to either do the four day hike or take the train to Machu Picchu. It's up to you, whichever you prefer. The hike is a total of 41 kilometers over higher elevations. Uh, the train is comfortable and has Vista Dome windows and they have hot service and, and a bar on board. <laughs> um, the Inca Trail is only one way. So if you want to do it, um, you're only going to do it that one direction and then you're going to take the train on the way back. Big highlight for everyone here of course is seeing Machu Picchu and you're going to be joining one of our Inca warriors for the tour of Machu Picchu so they are the experts in Machu Picchu they'll be able to tell you things that you would never even read in a guidebook in that uh, in the day that we spend at Machu Picchu. Also on this tour, I visit a local community restaurant in the Sacred Valley, helping again to support more of the farmers in the area. Uh, we are using handmade biodegradable soap products that are produced locally for our Inca Trail hikers. Really important to pack some soap for that journey because there are very limited showers in the way. And then after this whole Inca Trail Machu Picchu or train experience, we go down into Lake Titicaca, where we spend some time uh, connecting with the people that are living on the shores of Lake Titicaca and visiting the islands known as Tequili and Uros. Um, from there we go back to Lima. Into the jungle uh, when we're starting, this is the lodge that we're staying at. It's very, very uh, rustic. It runs on a generator after 10 p.m. It is super peaceful. It's an incredible area to see lots of amazing wildlife. Cusco is the heart of the, the Inca. I keep saying that. It's really just the lifeline uh, for every place in this and beautiful country. It's kind of the, the Mecca of Peru and it's a great city surrounded by cobblestone streets and ancient churches, museums and very lively atmosphere. One of the other programs that we support in Peru is our women's weaving program. So when we first developed a partnership with the community, um, the cooperative is only run by three women. Now there are 60 women that are employed there. All of our tours visit Sorry, a lot of our tours visit this project in Peru where you get to uh, learn about traditional weaving, you get to try out their costumes, you get to purchase some souvenirs and interact with the local women here. So we funded training programs to help bring back the weaving tradition and these make the most incredible souvenir gifts for your friends and family. Checking out the train, this is the um, most comfortable way to get to Machu Picchu, which we of course do recommend. But for those looking to do the hike, it's worth it. I've done it. It's an incredible experience. At the end, you get to see Machu Picchu, regardless of which way you get there. Uh, so rise and shine to visit this magical lost city of the Incas in the early morning light. Um, Machu Picchu is an area where you learn about the history. We do it at a leisurely pace because you are at a little bit higher elevation. So you're gaining insight into some of the big highlights of Machu Picchu, which include the Temple of the Sun, the Temple of the Three Windows, the Temple of the Condor, and the Temple of the Water. It's a 15th century World Heritage UNESCO site, and it was recently, well, a couple of years ago, actually voted one of the new seven wonders of the world. And it's, it's more incredible in, in real life than it is in any photo or any uh, documentary that you've ever seen. And you get the stamp, which is a nice benefit of traveling all the way to, to somewhere like Peru. At the end of our tour, we spend a bit of time in the South. Uh, this is a more cultural experience for us. So learning about these really weird and wacky islands that were all made from reeds. Beautiful experience and a nice way to connect. We have a lot of other destinations to tour you through at G Adventures. We offer trips on all seven continents. We've got 100 plus countries in our inventory with over 700 tours to choose from. One of the really popular ones for our Canadian audience is the Morocco tours. So our highlights of Morocco is one I wanted to share with you today. It's 15 days going from Casablanca to Marrakesh. So if you want to hit Morocco's highlights, this is a really great trip to do. You get to wander through Casbah's spice markets. You go through the Sahara Desert. You're up in the high Atlas Mountains. You, you go coastal. You get to see Tangier, where everyone travels across from Spain to get into North Africa. Um, you can even go on a camel ride on this trip in through the, the Sahara desert. So it's it's a lot of a, a really incredible sights and sounds and smells and experiences and our 
guides and destination do an amazing job of, of showing you the best of the best. So you can see from the map here, we've got lots of ground to cover. Uh, a couple of highlights here. Uh, Volubilis is actually a Roman site, ancient Roman site, beautiful ruins to see. Uh, Fez, incredible markets. We do a mountain gate stay with a traditional Moroccan meal on this tour. We have a guided tour through the Medinas of Tangier. We are going into the Tadra Gorge where we stay and walk through the local villages. Um, Ait Benadu is a site that's seen in a lot of films, uh, which you'll probably recognize in just a few slides coming up. Um, so we're getting in to meet some of the locals. We are dining on some of the beautiful cuisine, visiting the spice markets and, and really embracing everything that Morocco has to offer. Um, one of the programs that we support in this area is organized by a partner called AFER, which is the Association des Femmes et Enfants Rural, which is my French <laughs> pronunciation there. So it's helping to develop the skills of rural women in Morocco. So we help to fund this training program to provide funds for a kitchen, a dining area, kitchen equipment, additional education resources. Um, we are kind of powering the administrative space with AC and fans for our travelers because it gets a little warm there. Uh, we have brought over 3000 travelers to the site for a locally homemade meal. So you understand um, a little bit of it. cuisine, you get to eat something delicious. We we do a little bit of an intro to language in this area and it's really helping to support over 700 women and children in this area of Morocco that wouldn't necessarily have a means of adequate uh, income. So really nice kind of feel good experience here. Fez is one of the beautiful but crazy places in Morocco. We are going through the 9,000 winding streets in Fez that are all located within 365 hectares of, of land here. So some of the buildings in the Medina date back into the ninth century. Um, there are over 350 active mosques that are still in use today in the Medina. What you see in the screen is a shot of the tannery. So that's where they're doing the, the tanning of the leathers. And this is taken from one of the um, gift shops that you get to go into. My advice for you if you're going to Morocco is, and this area, it looks beautiful. Um, if you are uh, interested in, in shopping, this is the best, best place that you can buy some like beautiful leather goods locally from those who have created it rather than buying your souvenirs somewhere like the airport. Now, the desert experience is definitely something that everyone comes back raving about. We're meeting with uh, some of the local nomads in the Sahara Desert. So going into a little village where we meet some of the music or sorry, musicians, learn about the history. They do a little bit of a storytelling experience for us. Um, we have that opportunity to get on a camel ride for, for that beautiful sunset shot. And then really kind of, it's just a, a it's a, the landscape is, it just looks like you're on a completely different planet. So beautiful experience. Ait Benadu, which I mentioned earlier, this is one of the Kasbahs in Morocco. This is actually, a, again, a World Heritage Site. Um, you may recognize it from uh, some films like Gladiator, I think it was in, and Game of Thrones and Babel. It's an earthen built fortress. Uh, there are just a few families that are still living in this fortress and it's interesting that they've taken the, the architecture from the actual site and replicated it across that dry riverbed in the town. So the whole area of Ait Banadu looks like it's one giant UNESCO World Heritage Site. Another amazing site in Morocco is Marrakesh. Uh, we are going into a historic Riyadh for a cooking class in Marrakesh with a master Moroccan chef to enjoy a lunch that we've prepared together. So traditionally in Morocco, it's a lot of couscous and there's a lot of tagine and that is the dish that we're getting to learn how to make in Morocco. So you can actually buy a beautiful tagine ceramic dish from one of the markets in Marrakesh after your cooking experience so that you can recreate that for your friends and family at home. I also in the markets in Marrakesh, you'll find lots of leather their goods, but lots of spices. Um, the Moroccans really love to negotiate and they love that kind of interaction. It's not um, 
it's not an aggressive bartering situation like you find in some markets in different places of the world. It's actually a really nice conversation where they serve you some mint tea and you sit down and you have a conversation and then you talk about if if you do want to buy something. Um, personally, I'm not a big shopper when I'm traveling overseas, but I loved the shops in Morocco because uh, that experience was really nice. It was really interesting to have those conversations with with people in the in the markets. A couple other destinations just to put on your radar. Uh, Essential India. India is one of our top sellers and we get a lot of solo travelers going with us to India. Again, for that safety and security and traveling in a group. Uh, the Essential India tour is one of our most popular. So we're going from the Rajasthan area to the Taj Mahal. We're connecting to some beautiful sites, seeing the, the Ganges River at Varanasi, learning about Hinduism, uh, going to see some of the like crazy stunning architecture that can be found in the steppe walls and some of these ancient sites in Jaipur, but also getting off the beaten path. So we're going into what is considered to be kind of a small town in India, which is actually quite, quite big <laughs> compared to uh, our Canadian small towns, but really an incredible experience. On this tour, it starts with uh, a really beautiful experience. So Delhi airport is a little crazy. Uh, we have included an arrival transfer for everyone and it's provided by a program that we support called Women on Wheels, Women with Wheels, pardon me, Women with Wheels. Um, so it's a female chauffeur system. Uh, we are supporting them by uh, having this transfer included in all of our tours, so helping them to buy more vehicles to increase their fleet and to provide women with an adequate sense of um, employment uh, and a way to provide for their families. So this tour has lots of different stops on it. Uh, another kind of big highlight, of course, is Delhi. Uh, we go for a city walk, so a really interesting way to see the sites. In Delhi, our city walk is guided by someone who has graduated from a, uh, a street youth program. So in Delhi, there is a problem with lots of kids living on the street. So we're working with a nonprofit in destination to help to, to solve that problem, to give them access to education, shelter, um, food uh, so that they can continue uh, studying, graduate from that and, and make something with their lives. So pretty, pretty incredible experience going on a, a city tour with someone who used to live on the streets. And it's, it's one of the things that we have included here that's it, a lot of people come back kind of saying how special that was to be part of that. It's, uh, it's through the Salam Balak Trust that we do that. So if anyone's interested, you can read more about that at the Salam Balak Trust. Now, on this tour, we go to the Amber Fort, we do a Rajasthani rural stay in a little village called Dula Village. Uh, we are doing a cycling excursion, we go to the Taj and the Baby Taj. Um, we're in and out of the Agra Fort uh, with a local historian. We're going into a couple palace complexes, a temple complex, and then we have a river boat trip on the Ganges at sunrise and sunset, uh, which includes a candle flower ceremony. So feeling like we're really part of things. Um, here's a quick shot of the Women with Wheels program that we support in Delhi. So it provides livelihoods for women where women weren't accepted before. Um, it's changing cultural norms by getting women into the transportation business. Uh, today, over 1,000 women cab drivers are breaking stereotypes, so they've gained employment as chauffeurs. Over 500 drivers were trained in 2018 and around that same amount were trained last year. So pretty amazing experience. They're looking to expand this in further to Jaipur, Kolkata and Indore as well because of the success that they've seen in Delhi. So really amazing. It's just like just lovely smiling face that meets you at the airport so that you feel like you're being personally welcomed into a, a pretty big country. Um, the walk through Delhi gets us into some of these shops, also takes us through some of the highlights in the area. So we're going into the markets, uh, some of the, um, uh, the Connaught Place, and visiting the Salam Balak Trust as well. In Jaipur, we visit a 15th century amber fort, which the region is pretty famous for, super stunning destination. This is one of the areas where we have a local historian joining the tour. So in addition to the G Adventures guide, we have local experts that come and go into our tours. So they're the ones that are gonna tell you all the specific information about the places that you'd like to see. 
Um, some of the sites that we get to see, absolutely stunning. Big highlight for everyone though is the Taj Mahal. I've got two destinations left in the presentation for today. Um, one is my favorite to talk about, and that's South Africa, because this was actually the last G-Adventures trip that I did. Um, this is uh, an entire continent's worth of greatness, really in this like nice little package. Uh, in South Africa, you can safari in style. <laughs> the trip that, and for a pretty amazing price point too. The trip that I chosen is one that I've personally uh, been on. It's our Explore Southern Africa trip. So 12 days from Cape Town. Um, this one actually goes all the way to Vic Falls. Pardon me, I had to update that one. I'll show you the map here. <laughs> so we were going uh, to spend a few days in Cape Town, getting into the Cape Peninsula. Options to get out to see some of the wine country in the area. Cape Town is, itself is just a world-class city. It's one of my absolute favorites. Incredible waterfront, really great restaurants. There is um, the opportunity to get to Robben Island to see where Nelson Mandela lived for years and years and years. To go up to Table Mountain, you can do a hike or you can take the, uh, <laughs> take the little gondola. Um, you get to see penguins and um, it's, it's just beautiful. From there, we fly to Joburg and get into uh, Soweto for a tour to learn a little bit more about the Mandela history in South Africa. From there, we go into Kruger National Park, where we stay in a lodge that actually has three giraffes living on site, which is pretty amazing to navigate when you're walking through to get breakfast in the morning. <laughs> um, giraffes and they have, uh, they have zebras and I think they have warthogs also living on site. Um, from there, we're going out into Kruger a couple of times a day on safari uh, with our local guides. After Kruger, we go to Karangwe, private game reserve, uh, also going on safari morning and afternoon and sometimes evening, an open air safari with naturalist guides. Uh, we meet a Nat Geo researcher in Karangwe and go out on safari with them to learn about the cats in the area. So learning about the, the cheetah and the leopard and the lions uh, that we hopefully will get to see on safari. And then this trip finishes up in Vic Falls uh, where we walk around it. We go uh, on a river cruise. Um, you could whitewater raft it or you can take a helicopter to fly over. So beautiful site, really nice tour itinerary in this part of the world because we're visiting kind of like coastal metropolitan Cape Town. You get the wildlife in the middle and then you're back in, in nature in Vic Falls. A couple of highlights on the tour, of course, Cape Town and the beautiful penguins. But this one is a lot to do with the wildlife um, that are a little bit bigger than these guys. So these are the African penguins. There's about 3,000 of them that live uh, off of Boulders Beach, uh, just south of Cape Town. Kruger National Park is the absolute highlight, though. It's 19,000 square kilometers full of wildlife. So there's 147 different species in this area, so more more options, I guess not options, more species of large mammals uh, than any other park on the continent. It's just amazing to see these cats in the wild too in Karangwe Game Reserve. So if you're interested in seeing kind of more of the big cats, South Africa is, is preferred um, because they have the greater concentration of lions and leopards and cheetahs. In Karangwe, they actually have a meta population project for reintroducing cheetahs back into the wild, which is why the National Geographic uh, uh, expert is joining uh, us on the tour. So they're talking about how, how, what the process is, I guess, to, to reintroduce cheetahs back into the wild um, and the need to protect them. And that's part of the National Geographic Big Cats Initiative. So pretty, pretty incredible. Um, the lodge that we stay at in Karangwe is like, um, permanent tented camp. So it's, it's a thing that you would see on a in, in a film. <laughs> it's magical. They have safari rangers that guide you back after dinner, just in case something's on the pathway to where you're staying. Um, you can hear lions roaring at night. And there's probably going to be something like a warthog crawling kind of like nearby your tent. And that's not a frightening thing because they, they just eat vegetables. <laughs> it's, a, it's pretty amazing to be that close to, to nature and wildlife. Um, on this tour, we finish at Vic Falls. We also go in to support one of the programs here. So this is the Lusimpopo Women's Club. So this is uh, a way for women in this area to provide local catering to tourism. So we actually have um, a partnership with them where all of our travelers get to experience one of their lunches. They also provide a um, 
a local lunch service for healthcare workers at the local hospital. They work on a garden project to provide produce for the community, and they are working on a community fund to help cover funeral and burial costs for families that can't afford it. So lots of really amazing things that are coming out of that. Now, one other program that we support in Africa, I just wanted to mention quickly because I'd included it at the start, and this is our cook stove program. So this is a Maasai Clean Cook Stoves program. You can see, you might not have noticed it earlier, this little mud hut has a very shiny chimney, and that's because there was a clean cook stove installed in this as a part of one of our tours. So any of our tours that travel through Tanzania, funds from that are going back into help the local community. Um, we do a guided walk with the Maasai Mamas to tour around through the local village. And if there is a installation happening, then our travelers have the chance to support that in destination. It's a pretty, pretty incredible program um, that they have, uh, that we're very, very thankful that we're able to help support. So cook stoves are really important in this part of the world because a lot of people before were cooking and heating their homes with open fire, which of course leads to uh, a number of respiratory problems. So by providing a, a clean cook stove with that proper chimney, um, we're reducing the, the stress on, on health of, of generations that are living in these, these super rural areas. Last destination I wanted to share with you, and I know I'm talking for a very long time, so hopefully everyone's still tuning in, um, is Antarctica. This is, um, one of the most majestic destinations that we can experience. Um, and it's a destination that I think has really just opened up for tourism in the past couple of decades. It is absolutely the, the trip of a lifetime. It is not as cold as what you'd think. <laughs> it's um, the temperatures that when we go there are really quite quite warm for our Canadian travelers. So when we're traveling to Antarctica, it's between the months of October and March and the temperatures hover around zero. So I think we can all kind of handle that one. We provide parkas and boots, so you'll be nice and cozy warm and you'll be cruising on one of our most beautiful little small ships. So this is our uh, G Expedition. She only holds 134 travelers. It's really hard to see scale in Antarctica because it's hard to tell like how big those mountains are or how big even those icebergs are. But the ship itself holds 134. We have um, cabins on board that range from a suite to a quad share, making it more affordable for people to go to Antarctica. And the itinerary starts in Southern Argentina. We go across the Drake Passage and then we're spending time in the Antarctic Peninsula. We're not just cruising by and giving it a wave and taking photos of penguins though, we're getting out and we're jumping in zodiacs and we're gonna be walking on Antarctica. So the destination itself is super stunning and magic. It's a big bucket list for lots of our travelers. It's the most peaceful destination that you can go to because the only population there is really the penguins. <laughs> and you're doing it all aboard this really beautiful ship. Uh, we have a, a nice lounge area, a, a Lonely Planet library. We've got a sun deck on top if you want to sunbathe in Antarctica. Um, the ship is, is beautiful. It was refurbished back in 2009. Uh, we have uh, a wall of science. We have a really incredible team that are there to explain everything that you want to know about polar cruising, about geology, marine biology, about history, about um, birds. If you want to talk for hours on birds, I'm sure that our guides would love that. We have one expedition guide for every 10 travelers. This is Jonathan Green. He's been working with us for a number of years and he actually works um, with National Geographic. He was recently in one of the uh, BBC programs on, on ocean science. So uh, this incredible team complement the hotel team on board that are making it nice and cozy for you while you're traveling in these Arctic or Antarctic waters. So one of the things that we do support in this area too is the Ocean Health Fund because um, we know it's very important to keep the oceans clean so we can continue to travel and explore. Over the past five years we've done fundraising through uh, efforts on the ship so we do a 
uh, an auction for, for the charts. We do uh, an auction for some art on the ship and we've been able to raise uh, $400,000 actually to help to contribute to the Ocean Health Fund. So pretty amazing. Um, so they focus on protecting fragile ecosystems. They're also uh, combating ocean waste, which is a growing problem and then supporting science and research. But the experience that you get in destination is just so incredibly surreal in Antarctica. It's, the bottom of the world, it's as far south as you can really get. It's um, covered in glaciers and mountains and icebergs. And there's just moving parts everywhere with the movement of the ocean and the icebergs. And then of course you have the chance to see whales and penguins really like literally this close. So you can see in the back, that's our ship, of course. We have done an excursion where everyone has offloaded from the ship into our zodiacs. And this was just taken from one of the zodiacs that's out for one of our zodiac cruises. We do spend some time on land walking around with these little guys. These are the Gentoo penguins. They're the most common that you find in Antarctica. Um, you'd see hundreds, maybe even thousands of them every day when you're exploring Antarctica. And, and we're mindful to kind of keep back from them and, and stay off the, the penguin superhighway. They're pretty fun to watch though. So really great to, um, to just kind of find a spot on the snow and sit down in your snow pants and, and, and just take it all in. There's more than just one type of penguin down there. The more common ones that we see include the, uh, the chin strap here, as you can see from his, his charming uh, profile. You'll notice where the name comes from. And this is the Adeli. These are my favorite. They have an all black head. They're pretty, pretty adorable. They're like short and stubby too. <laughs> and then there's lots of bird life. If you're interested in other birds, these are the black legged kittiwakes. So these guys actually nest in all continents, but you see them um, a lot in Antarctica on our trips. In terms of mammals, there are the um, whales, of course, in the ocean, but then lots of seals. This is the leopard seal. This is the biggest predator in Antarctica. He looks really nice and smiley here, but when he opens his mouth, there's room for a penguin inside. Here's a shot of our, our, our fancy attire for our expedition cruising. Nice cozy jackets. Um, they're three in one. So if you are too warm, you can take out that inner layer and that is intentional. It's not as cold there as what everyone thinks. Um, the boots that they're wearing are like neoprene on the top. So nice and cozy, really great for hiking, but also super grippy. And we're spending lots and lots of our time in the zodiacs. We've named them all after the provinces and territories of Canada. So this one is the Saskatchewan zodiac. Um, and of course the jackets are red because we're a Canadian company. So great destination. If you're interested, uh, we do recommend putting on your bucket list. It's majestic, it's stunning. And we've got tour dates out for 2022 and 2023 now. So good for planning in advance. Now, just a couple things before I finish, just wanted to let you know, traveling with confidence and safety is really important for us. So um, from start to finish, we're gonna be taking care of you. Uh, so before you join us, uh, G Adventures will be working with your travel agent to check in to make sure you've got all your questions answered. When you arrive, we're making sure that you're healthy, that you've got all the information that you need. Our guides have extensive training and are supported locally by our regional offices in addition to our, our three major offices in Toronto, Australia, and then in the UK. While you're on tour, our guides are going to be making sure that your um, menus are translated, that your travel plans are organized, that you're seeing all the things you wanted to see in destination. And then before you leave, we're of course going to check in and make sure that we, we checked all those boxes, we hit all those marks and that, that you have had the most amazing life changing travel experience. Uh, in light of COVID, we've been working with the World Travel and Tourism Council to lock down the safe travel stamp, which is really important. It's assurance for you that we have passed uh, health and hygiene protocols that are aligned with World Travel Tourism Council. And if you're looking to book now, we know that things are changing. So we have a book with confidence program by which if you're booking travel for 2021, you can change your date up to 30 days prior. So pretty flexible on that. Um, or if you're booking for 2022, then you have that lifetime deposit so that you are able to change to a different destination or a different tour date. So if you if you really want to kind of uh, get something booked in, um, but you're not super certain on the dates, we have the utmost flexibility in making it work for you. So nothing to, to stress about there. So if you're looking for more information, um, just talk to the team at Paul.
travel. We have brochures for 2021 available electronically. So they'll be able to send you a link to these. We've got our National Geographic Journeys brochure on the left and our G Adventures Earth brochure on the right. So in addition to the tours that I've showcased tonight, um, we have a lot to choose from. So if you're looking for some travel inspiration, definitely reach out to this team and they will be able to to assist you. So I hope you've enjoyed the presentation tonight. I know it's a lot of destinations. I've been talking for a little bit longer than I had planned to, but happy to take questions now uh, if, if any have come in. Thank you, Erin. That was fantastic. I just feel I feel so um, like it's such a privilege to um, be able to promote a company like yours and just feel so proud of it. Um, and just for a lot of the reasons that you you mentioned in the uh, in the tours of things, the good that you're doing around the world. So thank you for that. Um, we do have a couple of questions. Um, can you just, can you just, uh, I know we've talked about this before, but of somebody who's traveling as a solo traveler, what would be sort of the average age on one of your, say, classic tours? Yeah, good question. So our, so actually, <laughs> my last tour that I did, uh, the eldest traveler was in their 90s. So it was a, a full spread of ages. Um, for our classic programs, we're usually getting travelers in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s join us. So if you're going as a solo traveler, what I would recommend is you talk to your agent and they can, they can find out exactly the age range on your specific tour to give you a better idea of of the travelers that have already booked onto that to make sure that it's the right fit for you. One thing that we've done at G Adventures is that we've um, we've created a line of tours uh, for our 18 to 30 something crowd. So typically our younger travelers kind of stick towards that. And then our classic tours are really a good mix of people of all different ages. Perfect, that's excellent. Um, I was going to ask, um, that was fantastic. Oh, can you just mention a little bit about the um, tours you have um, in partnership with the Jane Goodall Institute? Oh yeah, of course. So Dr. Jane Goodall is one of our best friends. <laughs> We've been working with her for, I think three or four years now. And we have a Jane Goodall collection of tours, which includes 20 wildlife focused itineraries. So a lot of the programs that we do in Africa, in the Antarctic, in the Arctic, in Costa Rica, have the Jane Goodall kind of seal of approval almost. So if you're looking through those brochures, there'll be a little, um, a little icon of a Jane Goodall outline <laughs> to indicate that uh, that they've been endorsed and approved by her. Now with those tours, uh, part of the proceeds are actually going back to the Jane Goodall Institute here in Canada. So by traveling to see these like amazing wildlife experiences overseas, you're actually helping the programs here in Canada too. And so what their initiatives are focused on is bringing the Roots and Shoots education program for kids into schools from coast to coast. And that's just an amazing initiative, so. Awesome, that's perfect. Um, if somebody, um, I guess uh, somebody has a question about having, they have maybe a deposit that's with you guys. Um, it's probably, um linked to they could probably we could find out for them um you know what booking number it's under so just get yeah, get in touch with us uh chris about that um and then another question which is a good question about um do you um someone's asking do they need to book with a travel agent or can they book directly with g adventures and that it's a, it's a really good question. I think um, one of the things that we can do at Paul Travel, and I'm sure that you would back that up, is kind of tie everything together where we have the flights, we have the insurance, you know, you can phone us anytime. And we just have, you know, um, make sure that everything, all the details are looked after. Um, and then we work so closely with you. So instead of yeah. having to call you, they're just one stop shop in um, contacting us. So I absolutely agree with that. And I think that the value of a travel agent is, is extra special this year when things kind of are a little bit complicated for making your travel plans. So we recommend booking through your travel agent. Yeah, awesome. Um, and then I just had one other quick question um, regarding the family travel. Can you um, just um, talk about, so on those family tours, what the accommodations might be like? For like sure. Accommodate. 
Yeah, so the there's kind of two lines of family tours that we have. So there's the two adventures family ones where they qualify as like a standard level of accommodation, which in, in star rating, I would say three. Um, we do have a, a full list of the properties that we're staying at. And they, with the family tours, they have been chosen for their um, amenities. So a lot of the family tour hotels will have maybe a pool on site or they'll have family designed rooms. So if you have... Uh, a couple of families traveling together then we can have side by side or join rooms or they can also offer like triple accommodations. Um, with the National Geographic family journeys the accommodations are a little bit more comfortable so if you want to put a star rating on it I would suggest it's like closer to a four on that one so a little bit of difference between the two and we have um, both the G Adventures family and the National Geographic family one available in Costa Rica. Okay, awesome. That's amazing. Great. And just some really great com um, comments on uh, just uh, such a wonderful presentation and a favorite of, um, of our series. So thank you so much, Erin. Um, we'll, we'll wrap it up at, at this one hour. But yeah, it was just, um, thank you so much for sharing with us and, um, and, and the opportunity just to uh, spend time and telling us a little bit about um, the world and your Thanks company. for having so me. It's lovely. It's so great to talk about travel. So happy to be here. <laughs> Good. You've been wonderful, Erin. Thank you. Yeah, perfect. So yeah, we'll just wrap it up. Hope to see everybody again next week and we'll just stay in touch. And if anyone has any further questions, you know, don't hesitate to reach out to um, Rhonda or I or um, your agent at the office. So have a great afternoon and evening, everyone. And um, we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Good night. Bye.